Hello, Mark Red Larson here for the Dreamcatcher Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Today, my guest is Brent Jacobs from Belgium. Thanks for joining us, Brent. How's everything over in Belgium? Hey, Mark. It's quite amazing. Thank you for having me. I look well, forward you. to it. So it's thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so how was the weather in Belgium today? A bit rainy, bit bit foggy, but overall quite enjoyable. I like okay. like this. So, do you do you get snow where you're at? Probably do get snow. Yes, a lot actually. It's more okay. so around uh, around November. Um, it, it gets really snowy, but yeah, it's it's the enjoyable part. <laughs> How so, about do you that? do you ski? No, I do not. Uh, I'm ski. I. <laughs> I do not ski, I do not rollerblade, nothing that I do not have control of, I, I do not. <laughs> okay, I, I'm with you, I'm very much with you, so um, so you're born and raised in that area then? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I am half Portuguese, as that part, um, okay. I do not speak any of it, but I am um, I'm born and raised in Belgium, um and yeah probably, like it's 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 a good place it's fun it's a bit boring at times but fun it'd be all right so are you in a, in a town or how big is your community that you're in um currently we live in a very small village of like really small i think it's like 30 40 people maybe oh. a little bit more so it's really really small wow. um but I mean, I, I like it that way, you know, like... Yeah, I think I've, that's cool. Yeah, we, we've lived in a city before, and cities are so dramatic, you know, in the sense of there is crime, like a lot of crime. Yep. Um, people don't connect. Like, when we arrived here, when we moved to this place, there was, like, um, people came to say hello, came, brought gift baskets, you know? So, oh, wow, cool. Yeah, that it was definitely... A change, but a good change, uh, and uh, yeah, I like it like this better. No. It's, it's better. Okay. That would be me too. So, so what do you do there? I mean, what do you do for making a living? Um, I mostly run my marketing companies. I do have a few e-commerces as well. Um, one that I run in real life, like uh, with actual stock, um, and the others online. Um, mostly okay. do marketing mainly seo companies and that's why like I, I spent most of my days running my companies okay what got you started in those particular companies uh well at first i like the very first company i started was an e-commerce you know it was called okay. Falora. okay um and i didn't have like you what, what you need to know is i initially had a nine to five job right okay um and I quit that job. That was the most depressing point out of my entire life. Like it was dark, yeah. it was it was very yep. bad. And it was bad for multiple reasons, right? I was morbidly yep. obese, I was very sad. I didn't, like I dropped out of school because I got oh, bullied wow. every single day. Oh, okay. Um, and then, then I went to diet camp, which is by the way, the best part of my, my, my youth. You know, that was the best okay. part, like, I met my ex there, which was a height, like it, it was very, very nice for me. Right. Um, but when I came back, I dropped out of school. I got a nine to five because I come out of a family where jobs and education are the norm. Yeah. And while they aren't anymore, right? My family became very understanding of the entrepreneurial life as soon as okay. I... Good. um I, I made my first big check, um, but before that, it was expected that you started like studying, job, get yep. a house, and traditional, yep. yeah. And that wasn't just that wasn't my thing. So I I quit my job on a very dark day, and well, it, it could have been my last day to be fairly honest. I, I um, wow, I said I either end it all here or I make it make wow. things happen and back then i was very good with computers already so i figured right. i will start a company doing that um which i ended up not doing but i remember okay. when i said to my mom that i i am going to start this company i'm gonna become rich and you will see and very confident teenager that right, was right. Yeah. <laughs> we are yeah at that age yeah. yes 
I was about to get humbled, but back then I was very proud and I proclaimed, like I said, I will make it. And she dismissed it because for her, only one in a million would make it. Yeah. Now, kudos to my mom. She was very supportive as soon as she saw that I had an actual future. But at that point, she said only one in a million will make it. And I took that personal. So I went to start my e-commerce. Okay. Um, and that e-commerce like followed the concept of dropshipping because I felt like uh, I discovered gold when I discovered uh -huh. dropshipping. I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't like I didn't need stock. I didn't need any of that. The thing is, right. I didn't right. have budget. I like I literally had zero dollars on my bank account. Like I was broke. You really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes. So I, I I didn't have any money for a domain name. I didn't have any money for hosting. I was running a free Weebly site with products okay. listed okay. on it like not even not even the shopping part because you have to pay for the shopping part oh know? wow okay yeah so i i didn't know what i was doing at all and i started falora and doing that i knew i i needed some promotion right i needed to start promoting right, my right. product yep. uh, and i didn't have facebook ads and i like yeah facebook groups i started posting in facebook groups but i wasn't working out so that's when i hit on seo like somebody told me you need SEO done mm -hmm. and it was probably one of those spam mails everybody gets. <laughs> yeah, I <hear> yeah. <laughs> yep, I know exactly what you mean. But for me at that point, it was like game changing. I, I had something to learn. I was very interested in learning. So I joined right. every SEO group possible, like every, every single one. And I had cool. nothing to lose. I, I was broke, right, so right, I am yeah. nothing to lose. So, the first thing I did is I started Blogspots because I didn't have money for domains. Okay. And um, I, I started posting every single day, 2,000 words. You know, that was wow. my goal, to test out theories cool. of um, SEO, to understand it, like to, to understand the concept. And in the meanwhile, I was bothering every single expert, right? I was asking questions to everybody. Which, way to do it, yeah. Yeah. I need to I need to get answers and a lot of people think that people who are experienced and have status are going to ignore you but they are actually very willing to help. Yes, um, that's what I found too. Yeah. Yes. And um not much later I had a blog like I, I one of my blogs was on paranormal sightings and the main reason I oh, started wow. that yeah is because I was watching this guy on YouTube and he right. did that. And I enjoyed watching that before I went to bed because it was very, like, it was yeah, fun it's to pretty, watch. It yeah. would be, yeah. Um, and I figured, yeah, I, I can just watch his videos and write a blog post about it, you know, about Perfect. all those sightings. And I would do that. And then one day I wake up and my blog had like 5,000 views. And then I refreshed my Whoa. page and it has 7,000 views. And oh, I refresh awesome. again. And my, my blog my blog was blowing up and I couldn't believe it. So I, I started checking around and I actually went viral. You know, one of those big groups they shared it. And Whoa, awesome. That's when I realized, oh maybe maybe I got a niche for this. And Yeah. Yeah. And and literally as if as if it was meant to be, this guy Christopher Fishback uh hits me up. And he was one of the okay. experts I contacted and he asked me, hey, Brent, what, what do you need in order to make it happen? You know, what do you need uh -huh. in order to become successful? And I said, well, realistically, I just need a domain name and, and hosting, but I, I'm just not that far in my journey yet, right? Right. And as if, like, I, I didn't even ask anything. He just, he said, what, what would your website be about? And at that point, mm -hmm. my step-siblings, they were um, very into diamond painting. So I said oh, okay. I would make an affiliate marketing website based on diamond painting, right? So he bought me a domain name and hosting and said, here, Brent, it's a gift from me. Wow, nice gift. And that would change my life. Not that, uh, not that the affiliate marketing website would become huge or anything. Uh, it would make 100, 100 a month. But for me at that time, it was like a gold mine, right? <laughs> Yeah, when you're down that to, to zero, yeah, yeah that would have been. Exactly. And then I started getting hit up by other experts, Stephen Kang, for example, you know, um, and 
I had nothing to lose so I started working for all these people for free because in my head the knowledge I could learn was worth way more. So I started doing that and I believe it was first Stephen Kang like I was helping him, him out with um with lead generation websites I was helping him set up some websites and okay. he was impressed so he posts in his group which has like 70,000 members he posts saying yeah, I work with Brent Jacobs. This guy is amazing. And almost overnight, like, I, I people start yeah. messaging me. Can I work with you? Can I work with you? Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah. I bet. Wow. And suddenly I went from this skit that was, like, making 100 a month to the skit that, like, overnight I was doing 10,000 a month. I'm not even kidding. Wow. That's talking about happening just so, over, I mean, that just uh, yeah. how your life can change in just a split second. Yeah, exactly. And from there on, like, yeah, of course, I, I had to learn a lot business-wise because, you know, like, I I had no clue how to run a business. But that's how I rolled into SEO. That's how I started my first agency. And with a bit of strategizing and a bit of systemizing from there on, um, I started my other agencies, you know, because I realized that if I can do it once, I can replicate it. And that's right. what I went on doing. And that's how I became like yeah multiple agency owners it's mostly cool. that that is so cool so what what's the future look like what would what would you like that to look like in five years um currently like i would say financially i only have one more goal and that's becoming an actual millionaire cash wise awesome. you know so i want to have a million in cash just to prove my mom wrong <laughs> I, can I can understand that that's a win-win. Uh, you prove her wrong, but you also have the money. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. good. Of course, I ha I have to say, because that sounds very mean, I, I love my mom to death, right? She's mm -hmm. the most amazing woman I have ever seen. Uh -huh. It's just that for me, I have to prove, like, from for, I took that personal, and I don't blame her for it. I don't hold a grudge. Right. It's more so that I set my mind on that goal, and I have to achieve it. Yep. I hope to get that done in the next two years. You know, cool. I, I'm already far ahead in my journey, so that's a good thing. Yes. Um, so I hope to get that done financially. And other than that, I'm really working my way into motivational speaking, building my personal okay. brand. So I hope to start speaking. Like after my book gets finished, I hope to start speaking on stages and get more into motivational speaking and... Cool. Well, help other people through the obstacles that I had to face. Yeah. Right. No, I that, that is so awesome. So, okay, you had two things. You're writing a book. What's your book? Yeah. Uh, currently, I'm writing a book on how people can start an SEO agency the way I did. You know, and it doesn't teach about okay. like working for free for people because obviously you you can't always do that. You know, there's not always gonna be experts that you can work for um, in specific industries. But I learned like with my first agency, I had a lot of flaws because I didn't know how to run a business. Right. I was overwhelmed, right. didn't have people that work for me. So I had to learn and I had to systemize. And once I learned all that, the client flow was dried up because my entire client flow was based on reputation. And that's not something you can control. If you don't control your acquisition, you have a flaw. So I needed to get an acquisition channel in place and I got all that in place. And now I had a system because I noted everything down. And then I okay. did those exact steps in a different industry that worked, but just like that could be coincidence. So I had to try it again. Sure. Worked again. And I did that like four or five times. And right now I actually own five SEO agencies, but I wow. did that five times and it worked all the time. And I figured what better way to actually like, I, I love helping people. And I figured if I write everything that I did down step by step, as well right. as telling my story doing that, it might just be the tool somebody needs to start their own journey. You know? Amen. Yeah. No, that's uh, definitely win-win. That's that's so cool. So, um, yeah. so would you want to write other books? Do you do you like writing books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I am working on a fictional book as well, mostly because I I love writing. I've always okay. been quite gifted as as a writer. Okay. Um, 
I would say that I like if I was meant to be anything, I was probably gonna be a writer, um, or at least a form of a storyteller. I like I have always been very gifted with words, so yeah. I do enjoy that. But I do wanna write a book about my my personal life once cool. my reputation is a bit more built, because I like I definitely have a story to tell. And I definitely have uh, experience to share. Yeah. Nice, very nice. So, so okay, that that's so awesome. So okay, in your speaking, have you do, have you done any speaking on stages already, or? Um, I've I've done a lot of uh, conferences online where where I speak on SEO, but not yet motivational speaking. That's actually why okay. I like I, I ran a marathon and now I'm going very hard in the gym, is because it, it's all by design, right? Because I believe that I can't motivate people if I haven't done anything worthwhile and financially mm-hmm. speaking, that's one thing, but finances isn't in the entirety of life, you know? True. So in order for me to get to motivational speaking, in my mind, I had to achieve more than I already did more than just financial success. Because if I want to motivate somebody, I better be somebody that you can get motivated by, you know? Amen. Yeah, I agree. No, I definitely agree. So, okay. So you're, you've written your books, um, you're speaking on stage. What would be next? Other than that, I, I, I want to see the world, you know, that's one thing Uh, I want to, I want to see, like, I want to see different cultures. I want to visit temples. I want to, yeah, see the world. Um, You know, I just want to have done everything on my mind. Um, I might want to run a triathlon, maybe. That's something I've been playing with. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I might want to climb the Mount Everest. That's also a goal of mine, but my mom isn't very fond of that idea. Um, No, I bet not. No, I can see a mom not liking that. Yeah. (laughs) Definitely on that, so... So that's cool. Okay, so this being the Dreamcatcher podcast, I have to ask, what was your dream when you were a child? What was what was something you thought you were going to do when you were a kid? <laughs> it's funny you ask that because we have actually we we have a recording of that somewhere stashed away. Um, they like oh, I really? was okay. Yeah, I was asked that question as a kid, and I remember saying, uh, "I want to have a big house and I want to be very rich," you know, and, and that's <laughs> no longer the case. Uh, I I I no yeah. longer care about money. Um, but something that has always been a very important part of my life is I I wanted to be a motivational speaker. Mostly I wanted to help other people and yeah, I I don't know, like I I had to, yeah, I had to get to that point. You know, I like, you do. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You finally, I mean. And probably with if you were bullied in um, school and um, everything else, your journey has gotten you to this point. I can kind of relate with your journey there. So, um, so would you have your own? I mean, you have your own brand. Would this your motivational speaking be your own brand? Um, no. See, my my own brand currently is into business and SEO, but I'm s- okay. Like I'm I'm slowly building towards. Um, slowly building towards motivational speaking the main reason i'm not immediately doing that is for example currently i'm going to the gym every day right okay um it's because i i like i don't do anything rush at the moment it's all by design so um currently i'm getting in the best shape i can possibly be because if i am going to be on stage if i'm going to write that book i want to be at the very peak of yep. every aspect that I'm talking about because otherwise I don't believe that I have the right to tell somebody else hey this is how you should do it this might be the correct I, like I agree. If, I, if I want to motivate somebody I want them to look at me and be like yeah this guy has done it you know? yeah he walked the walk yep yeah no and, I definitely agree on that so okay so what's your favorite thing to do at the gym uh oh I I love all of it I I am cool. in love with the gym um okay you know, I've done I've done both running um, as well as weightlifting, and I fell in love with both of them. I think I love running a bit more, and the main reason for that is because 
you know, weightlifting, it's it's a short period. You know, like if right, you lift right. weights, there's there's only a short period that you're in pain. But if you run, then you're constantly battling yourself. Everybody, everybody can run, you know, but let, let's say a marathon. You can train for a marathon, but you also can't train for a marathon, you know? True, right. It's not that the endurance, true. the issue. Like for, for a lot of people, endurance isn't the issue. A lot of people got the endurance to run four hours or five hours, even if they think they are not, they don't. The main issue is that it's a mental battle. And okay. that's what I love about running. It's constantly you against you because right. you have to face yourself in order to succeed. And um, I, I love that. You know, that's, okay. yeah. That's, that's cool. How did you, I mean, how did you get to that mindset? Um, that actually has to do with my, my ex, you know, when we broke up, uh, first of all, I don't have any ill feelings to her. She's an amazing woman. You know, okay. we, we just, we, we just didn't fit together anymore, but okay. she was also my best friend at the time. And we used to spend every single second of the day together, you know, like we would play right. games together. She was my partner in everything. Right. So when we would break up, I didn't have anything to do. And okay. I don't know, like I, I, I woke up one day and this was two weeks after the breakup. And I, I wake up one day and I, I set my mind on a half marathon a while ago, but then I, I decided like, yeah, if it comes, it comes. And I wake up one day frustrated, didn't know what to do. And I felt very sad. And so I just posted online. I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to run a half marathon. And that's what I did. I got outside, put my running gear on, and ran a half marathon. Wow. And yeah, that, when I got awesome. back, my like something like my mom. She she went to like she came outside to give me water, right? Because I I was dehydrated, but oh, I I, bet. Yeah. Yeah, I was determined to run it out. The sun was very heavy, and when I got back. And I was done and I walk inside the house. My mom said, now I am convinced you can do anything, right? And that flipped the switch in my head. Like, I I can do anything. I, I can literally do everything. Mm -hmm. And that's also when I set my goal on running my first marathon. And when I ran that one, right. I was convinced that if I just work hard enough, like, I can't always be the smartest person in the room. I can't. That's not up to me. Some people are mm -hmm. just intelligently more gifted than me. Okay. I'm not never okay. going to be the fastest, not always going to be the strongest, but I can outwork every single person. That is my choice. Right, right, yeah. right. And by just outworking other people, I can get ahead. It doesn't matter how talented you are. If I outwork you, you will have nothing left to beat me at. So... I figured if I just uh, work hard, I can do anything. And after True. my marathon, like, as I said, running is such a battle. And that marathon was the biggest mental battle I've ever had. Like, I faced every single demon there. Oh, I and bet. When, when I got done, I, I was a different person. I just, like, there's nothing that like there's no amount of pain I can take like I will succeed no matter what and that yeah that's just by putting myself in that position you know I mean okay so somebody that would think about doing like what you're doing or you know a marathon or whatever they're thinking how how does a person how did you get above those demons because you know I, I would think the majority of the people will let those demons dictate you know something like that or their day how how would you recommend a person get over that you know it's like, what well, in your experience? Yeah, so, in, in order to answer that, you have to know, when I was running, and this is during the marathon, right? The first, like, when I was feeling good, it was good. But mm -hmm. after the first 30 kilometers, my, my legs hurt beyond imagination. Like, I my bet. knees were giving in and I could like my shoes weren't really good. So I could feel the skin of my, oh, my feet underneath wow. my feet as well as my toenails. I could feel my toenails moving. Oh um, my gosh. So oh. yeah, I was in a lot wow. of pain and everything yeah. in me really wanted to quit. 
And right. um, then, like, every person has two voices, right? They have this right. voice that tells them it's okay, you know, like, you nobody's watching. You can just quit. Yeah. And that's the voice we like to hear. And then we have yeah. that voice that says... What what if you know? What if you give everything you got? What could you be then? And I believe that in order to overcome your demons, the reason for you to want to do something has to be stronger than anything else. And for me, my why, my reason why, was just way stronger than anything life could throw at me. And um in order to succeed anything like if you're not doing something because you genuinely want to achieve that then you're gonna struggle severely to to beat yep. yourself and yeah. the thing is that it doesn't matter what other people say about about you you know you can call me the most vile names call me names that are horrible right that won't beat me what i think about me will beat me right so yeah true your your reasoning behind why you're doing that, the reason behind the, your, your fight with your demons has to be stronger than any form of pain that will be thrown at you. And in my case, that was the case. Wow, that is so awesome. I mean, that is and motivating. I mean, that's motivating. Like, right, I mean, like you said, you were doing that to become yeah. motivating. So, so we've talked about it earlier. You would like to do a TED Talk or TEDx or... Yeah, I mean, I, I wanna like I, I wanna speak every single place I can possibly speak. You know, like I wanna I'm, I wanna share my voice with the world, and I believe that I I got quite a story to tell. Yeah. Um It's just that when I do, I wanna be like at the exact level that I intend to be. And I get that most people when they say that they are just putting it behind um but with me like it's it's all by design you know like i intended to run my marathon then i intended to go to the gym and i know that i will become a motivational speaker that's why i'm building it right now right um, right but yeah it's it's like as soon as i start it, i will speak every single place I can possibly speak at, you know, like, okay, I want to awesome. be heard. So, so, okay. Are you a coach? Do you coach people? I do on the site, you know, it's not something I offer as a service. It's something I do for free. You know, when people come okay. to me and they, they want coaching or mentoring, obviously I help them out because, you know, like I, I wanted people to help me too. And they did so. Yeah, I'm more okay. than happy to help people if they need it, yeah. Okay. So, okay, what would be the... I mean, somebody's really down um, and they they want to catch their dream. Uh, and then what would you tell somebody? Like, if you were coaching them, they're having a really... You know, everything's not working against them. You know, I mean, how would you get them motivated to move on to the next step? Well, I actually have this happen. I'm talking with somebody who... It's, it's very negative, right? And the main reason she's so negative is because I'm overweight, you know? Okay. Um, and everything is great when everything is great, but ev when, yeah. when things get really sad, then it's very difficult for them to stay yep. disciplined. And um, my thoughts on that are a bit arrogant, I would say, because I feel that you know, if you really want something, you you just gotta like it, you. People expect to achieve big things and get through right. it unscathed. You know. Yeah. That's not yeah. possible. If you're going to not. start something, <laughs> like if you're going to do something, you you can't just put your feet in the pool and be like, oh, okay, I don't know if I like that. No, you you will have to do it, and you will you're not going to like 90% of it. Yep. You know, if you liked it, if, if other people liked it, you aren't operating at the best of your abilities. You're not nearly operating at where you could be, you know? Exactly, yeah. Um, 
so if if you're somebody who's looking to achieve your goals and, and everything is really bad it doesn't matter whether things are really bad or really good it's never gonna get too good or too bad for you to achieve your goals there's no ideal situation to begin in there's Bro. no ideal situation to start running there's no ideal situation to start your company there simply isn't because you will always find a reason not to do it and you will yeah but there's a reason you are imagining that starting that business there's a reason you are imagining um running that marathon you know that's the universe telling you that there's something out there for you meant to happen and if you're just gonna let it sit there and be the person that dreams about this and dreams about that that's great but dreams will be your master if you're not putting in the effort you know and then, very true so no i mean that is so do you i mean I know you have a podcast. What's the name of your podcast? The like my my podcast is the Introvert Business Experience. And that's mostly because I, I am an introvert. I'm not very social. Um, although I, I don't know if you noticed, but introvert also stands for somebody who is um, somebody who doesn't necessarily get very energetic from talking with people. You know, like you have people who, when they talk with other people, they're in their element. I can talk with anybody perfectly now, even though I'm not the most social being. But I get socially drained quickly in at places like yeah. events. Right. right. Um, yeah. So I figured like networking wise, I'm not the greatest guy to do that long term wise. And uh, there's got to be other people like me. There's just be... And there's going to be other people who don't like going to events and stuff like that. I do like going to events. I just don't mm -hmm. like like the overwhelming uh, amount yeah, of people. I hear you. Yep, and, it is. It can be very draining. So um, yeah. so do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, definitely. The introverted business experience, you know, you can find it that way. Uh, I share business experiences on there, you know, as well as uh, tips and tricks to get started with your own business cool. and along the way I will eventually start sharing well I intend to start sharing my fitness progress that's one thing you know in the sense of nice. to start okay. towards my motivational speaking part um, and I will slowly be making my way into motivational speaking very nice so do you have your own regiment that you've come up with when you work out um yeah yeah at first it was a bit overwhelming like i used to work out three hours a day um okay wow so that was a lot yeah now recently the last six months i've been doing specific workouts um but yeah it's it's i've had people give me advice you know like i've had people sure. coaching me in their own sense of coaching by providing exercise that they found to be optimal but when it comes to fitness, a lot of it has been also from mostly experimenting and trying myself, yeah. Okay, okay, so cool. So what do you, I mean, in your downtime, I know you said you'd like to travel. What are some other things you like to do in your downtime? Oh, I just, like, I, I love to read. That's okay. one of the things. Not always business either. Like, I I, I love to read fiction. I, I love books in general. Uh, thing is that if I read a book... Um, I can't stop till it's finished because I get so absorbed <laughs> by the story. <laughs> yeah, I know that. The good book's hard to put down, yeah. No, yeah. uh, that is so cool. I mean, that is awesome. So, so Brent, so what are some other things that are going on in your life that you'd like to share with the audience today? Um, at the moment, I would say, yeah. Um, I mean, currently, there isn't really much going on in the sense of yeah I'm, I'm doing me you know i'm working out hard i'm working hard on my right. businesses building my youtube channel um yep going hard on everything so th there isn't really much for me problem. on that and yeah th that's yeah my, my life currently exists of waking up working recording a video going to the gym eating obviously because i need my calories um sure and maybe if I get lucky, I watch a show to, you know, de-stress. Kind of and, then, and then rinse and repeat. And I love it that way. I'm in my element doing this, so. That is cool. So what do you like to watch on TV, the little bit that you watch? Uh, I, I like shop, uh, shows that are very either business, like Suits. You know, I, okay. I love Suits. 
or I like shows where there's like plot twists. I like complexity, you know. Sure. Okay. Um, would you ever want to write uh, a program, or would you ever? I mean, act. Would you ever want to do something like that? Acting, acting, not really. Like, I, I have immense respect for actors. Right? They have to work right. very hard. But um, acting in itself, no. Writing a program, yeah, I would definitely, definitely do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I see myself okay. doing that. Okay, and you have, you have siblings. Yeah, I have a lot of siblings. So are they are they entrepreneurial like you are? Um, one of my like my oldest brother, he is. Um, he became an entrepreneur shortly after me. Well, shortly a year after I started, or so, maybe a okay. little bit longer. Yeah, and That's cool. he went to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Um... I mean, would you do like skydiving or anything like that? Do you like definitely to do thrill? Have you done? So maybe you've done skydiving. No, uh, I've done indoor skydiving, but I do want to go skydiving. I like okay. I want to go skydiving, bungee jumping. I want to do all the things that other people don't want to do. You know, I want to. Uh -huh. I want to do all the scary stuff because you only live once, and That's I have true. to. Yeah. So okay, I, I need to get together with you skydive right. then. So my yes. wife, like, she said she would join me on the ground. <laughs> she wasn't gonna do it, and I mean, do you zip line then too, or do you? I have done zip lining in my life, you know, because my dad used to be um, an ex-military, so we used to go to these expositions, ah, right? And there you would zip line, but I've never really done it from extreme heights, which is something I want to do too. Yeah, and there you go. I would also like to, you know, recently there's these big swings that they do over big. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, I've seen yeah, that. I want, yeah, I want to do that as well because it looks very scary and I want to <laughs> do that. I, I'm sure, especially when they let you go right there when they start yeah. that swing. Yeah. Exactly. Um, in fact, I saw a thing yesterday. A gal thought it was a bun or it, it was a zip line and it was a swing. And she would, <laughs> let me tell you, she was surprised when she went down rather than going across. And, <laughs> I can't imagine what she was thinking then. Probably not a yeah. lot. She's probably terror. So, um, <laughs> no. But, yeah, it is. So many people, it, they don't do that thing. And it's yeah. not about exhilaration and, and the fact you, you, you've you done it. And, uh, no, I just. So, do, do, you, do you play, like, sports? Um, currently, at the very moment, not. I used to. I used to play soccer um, at diet camp. I was the okay. captain of the team. You know, like the, we, they would um, organize games with other teams, and right, yeah, that that was fun. I, I definitely found a passion for working out and and sport at diet camp. That was definitely very fun. Okay, so is soccer as big a deal as it is like in Italy and um, some of the other countries around there? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's, it's it's very big of a deal here. Yeah. Okay, okay, that is cool. So. Well, uh, Brent, um, if, unless you have something else you would like to share, I might end it right there. Um, I would love to have you sometime maybe down the line come back for a follow-up if you would be open to that. <laughs> yeah, and perfect. Um, and uh, I, it's been great talking to you. Um, thanks Same for having here. you come on the, the Dreamcatcher podcast. Uh, look forward to keeping in touch with you. I, I look forward Same to seeing how your life progresses. Now that I know you're doing all this stuff, it's um, – that's awesome. You definitely got to keep track of yeah. how everything's progressing. When you do your first triathlon. Yeah, it would be, uh, would be very cool to do that, but I need to train a little bit more to do that because I'm not very good at swimming. <laughs> well, I, I, knowing you, you'll get there. I know you will. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> so that is so awesome. So, but Well, I will end it there. Um, like I said, thanks okay. uh, for joining us, Brent, on the Dreamcatcher podcast, and look forward to, like I said, um, you coming back in the near future. And on that, I'm going to let you go and have a good rest of your day and take care. Awesome. Take care. Thank you for having me. Thank you.